advanced functions 1.6 piecewise functions now you can guess by the title what this means functions with pieces right so this is something new for you it's not very difficult but you need to have some pretty decent graphing skills in order to be successful with your homework so like the parent functions you need to know how to draw them piecewise function defined by using two or more intervals as a result, the graph is made up of two or more pieces of similar or different functions. Each piece is defined for a specific interval of the domain of the function. Okay, so let's look at the first example I have here. And it says, we're going to talk about postal rates for a first class letter in Canada. So up to 30 grams is $1.05, but between 30 and 50 grams is $1.27. So if I were to draw this for you on a graph, I would have, well, the first one goes from, goes up to 30 at $1.05. And after 30, it changes price. So up to 30, that's what you're paying. And then between 30 and 50 grams, it's $1.27. So now I'm going to use a closed circle here because as soon as it hits 30 grams, they're gonna charge you more and it goes to up to 50 grams. And at 50 grams, that's it. So in this case, the um, it's no longer considered a letter if it weighs more than 50 grams. So we have our piecewise function here. We're gonna describe it over here. We're gonna say it's um, $1.05, $1.05 if the weight is between Uh, zero and so we'll put grams up to 30 and it's a dollar 27 if you're between 30 grams and 50 grams and we'll say it's going to include 50 grams and that's going to be it so this is where you're going to see the description of your graph and this is what it would look like if you put it on a coordinate plane. So let's take a look at one that would be kind of more up your alley in, in terms of what you're going to see in your homework. So this is a piecewise function. So it's kind of schizophrenic, right? It's got three different parts here. So it's x squared plus 1 if x is less than 0. It's 0 if x is equal to 0. And it's x squared minus 1 if x is greater than 0. So we have three things to consider here. The first being x squared plus 1 for x less than 0. Now because it says less than 0, that means that here I'm going to have an open circle. So x squared plus 1, you know what it looks like. It would be if I was just to sketch it on here, it would go like this, right? That would be x squared plus 1 if there was no domain restriction. But because there's a domain restriction, it means it's only going to start here and it's going to go like this. Open circle when x is 0 because it doesn't include it. Now it says if the function is equal to 0 if x is equal to 0. So that means that we have a little dot here, right? It's just one point. It's equal to 0 if x is equal to 0. And finally, it's x squared minus 1 if x is greater than 0. So again, this is open circle here, and it's going like this. So there's your piecewise function. Now, the question would be, in this case, is this function continuous? And remember, we talked about continuous functions a couple of lessons ago. So remember, a continuous function means you can draw it without lifting your pencil or pen. And in this case, that wouldn't be true. So the function is discontinuous. So it's discontinuous at a certain place because it's certainly continuous until we get here. And then we have this mess here and then it's continuous again. So it's discontinuous at x equals zero. And that's all you would have to say. Usually you're asked, is this discontinuous or a continuous function? Okay, let's go on to one a little more challenging. So g at x is equal to x squared if x is less than or equal to 1. 
and it's 2 minus x if x is greater than 1. So right away you need to know what kind of functions these are. So f x squared for x less than or equal to 1. So what I want to know, what happens when x is equal to 1 from my graph? I mean, I can sketch x squared. You know how to draw x squared. It goes like this, right? So it's going to go like this, and it's going to go like this. That's x squared. But we have a restriction on the domain, and that says that x has to be less than or equal to 1. So what happens when x equals 1? When x is equal to 1, g at x, or g at 1 here, would be 1 squared, which is 1. So 1, 1 is a point on the graph. And that happens to be equal to, so I'm going to make it a solid circle. So this is the point 1, 1. And the rest of the graph is going like this. Okay, so there's x squared for x less than or equal to 1. So we've restricted the domain of this function. So now the second part of it says it's 2 minus x if x is greater than 1. So greater than 1, I want to know what would be the value if it was equal to 1 for this. So when this would be 1, it would be equal to 1, right? 2 minus 1 is 1. But it doesn't include that on this part of the graph because it's only greater than. So that means open circle on here. So an open circle with a filled in circle just means a solid circle, right? Now how do I graph 2 minus x? So 2 minus x, 2 minus x is the same thing as minus x plus 2, which you know is a line with a y-intercept of 2 and a slope of negative 1. So if I continued this up, it would go through 2, but that's not going to be in this graph because it's only for x greater than 1. So it's going to go down like this. So if x was 0 here, we would be at 2, right? 2 minus 0, 2. Okay, so there's my graph. Is this continuous? Well, it went down like this, then it came up, and then this solid circle got covered by, it's like me taking my fist and putting my hand over it. So now it's still continuous. So this is continuous for all values of x. For all values of x. So this, this part here, the 1, 1 that we had to check, got um, sealed in, okay? So we didn't, we could have drawn this by just going, mm, mm, okay? Now, this one is the grandmother of all questions for today. Determine where the following function is discontinuous. Now look at all the parts to this one. That's enough to give you a headache, isn't it? Don't freak. Just start one little piece at a time. So let's look at the first part. Forget all this stuff down here. You know how to graph the function f of x equals 0 if x is less than or equal to negative 1. Okay, so we need a negative 1 on here. Let's put that on first. So here's negative 1. Less than or equal to. So what is the graph at, at negative 1? It's 0. 0 for all of it. That's kind of tricky, right? So that means it's going to look like this. And everything less than negative 1 is all 0. So now it's nice and continuous to here. Now I want to know what happens at negative 1. So let's go to the second part of the graph. It says x plus 1 if we're between negative 1 and 0. So what's f at negative 1? So when I put in negative 1 here, we had 0 for this part, right? So negative 1 this time is going to be negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So that's right here. And when I get to 0, 0 plus 1 is 1. So that means the graph is going to be at 1 here. And it's less than or equal to, so I'm going to put a solid circle there. So this is going to be like an open circle over the green and up here and then it's a solid circle. So now I have two parts of the graph done. Two parts. So far it's continuous all the way from negative infinity and up to x equals zero. 
Now I want to know what happens for between 0 and 1. So if x was equal to 0, this would be 0. But it's greater than, so that means at x equals 0, I need to have an open circle because it doesn't include this point because it's only greater than 0. And it goes to 1, but it doesn't include 1 as well. So we need another one here. And we're going up to when I put in 1, the value, the height of the function, if x was 1, would be 1. So at 1, I'm going to put an open circle. And this is going to be a parabola. So it's going up like that. Okay, so far so good. Now we look to the next part. It said it's equal to 1 if x is equal to 1. So we need to call in another color here. So it's equal to 1 if x is equal to 1. So that's closing in this circle, isn't it? That's my dot for this value. Okay, so far we can see we have a discontinuous point here. And now we have to figure what happens to this function. 1 over 2 minus x. So if you recall, 1 over 2 minus x, that would be the same thing as me writing 1 over negative x plus 2, which would be the same as me writing 1 over negative x minus 2. And this would probably be easier for you to graph because you know that the original function 1 over x goes like this, right? But this has been reflected about the x-axis because it was with the x. It's reflected about the x-axis. So that means my graph is going to now be over here. That would be the reflection. And then, this thing's not very good. And then it's going to be shifted to the right two places, right? To the right. So one, two going to be over here and it's going to go like this. So that would be the graph of this, right? That's this function. f of x equals 1 over 2 minus x. So I want to put that into this function here now. I want to join it. So for x greater than 1, I'm going to put a 1 on here and I'm going to put a 2 here. What happens at 2? Well, that's where my asymptote is, so you want to draw that in. And my function is going this way, but I want to know what is the value when x is 1. Because I need to know, is it going to be at the same point as this one, or different? So if I put in x equals 1, so I know you're going to say, but it says greater than 1. But it, it starts right after 1, like really, really, really close to it. So if I put in a 1 here, 1 over 2 minus 1 is 1. So that means we've got three things happening at this point here, right? So now we've got, we had this one that was open, and then this value closed that circle in, and now I have another function that's going to be open here on top of it. So that makes it very continuous. And this one's going this way, and this one's going this way. And there's all my little pieces. Now the question asked you, where is the function discontinuous? So where is it discontinuous? Well, let's just look at it, right? You can look at it and see. It's discontinuous at x equals 0. That's called a jump discontinuity. I'm going to write that in here. Jump discontinuity. Oops. If there was just a hole in something, you call that a point discontinuity, but jump because we went to here and then we had to jump down to here. And it's also discontinuous at x equals 2. And I'm sure you can see why, because we have a vertical asymptote. So at x equals 2, we have a vertical asymptote. So that breaks our continuity. Okay, now let's say that I didn't want to draw all this. I just want to say your teacher didn't say you didn't have to draw it. She just want to know 